what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy the LSU transfer portal, we know they need defensive tackle help. Uh, I apologize for not being more on top of this. Um, busy morning this morning, cooking. Uh, my, my, my wife had to leave town to go be with her sister. She's a child, so I'm, I'm you know, not to brag, running the household. Um, I, which, by the way, you single parents out there deserve, uh, I don't know how you do it, truly legendary. Um, you deserve all the love and respect in the world. But the point is, I, I did not get uh, quite as deep in the, uh, defensive tackle transfer portal weeds as I wanted to. I saw Lon yesterday, LSUodyssey.com. Yeah. Say Lon. Um, willing to go out on a limb and say that he expects the, uh, who's the Michigan State defensive tackle? Simeon Barrow. Simeon Barrow. That's right. That he expects Simeon Barrow to commit to LSU. From what he's heard about how the visit has gone, I think Philip Blady out of Indiana ended up committing elsewhere. Yeah, he committed to Auburn. Okay, so he ends up going to Auburn. Um, which he chose Auburn over LSU. That's odd, but maybe he, odd, maybe he though? didn't. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that's you true. That's true. Is that odd? Auburn's got a ton of money. Hugh Freeze a hell of a recruiter. Like, look at bro. Look at Hugh Freeze's last recruiting class. Why in the hell was Auburn like? How in the hell did they get their way to the top ten? Like, how in the world did Auburn almost convince? Uh, didn't they almost convince Ryan Williams and old boy from Ohio State to flip? The two receivers. Yeah, I mean, Williams uh, Jeremiah decommitted Smith. when when Saban left. That they yeah. ultimately pulled him back in. But yeah, like Auburn was his target. Um, but uh, but but yeah. So Auburn. I mean, there's no shame in losing Auburn. Um, have you heard anything on the Simeon Barrow uh, officially committing to LSU front? I mean, they. You know, he visited this weekend. Yes, that was yeah, that was on his, Sunday. Yeah, that was his first visit by all accounts. It went really well. And then. Um, Another transfer name that we haven't mentioned at another position uh, of need for LSU would be cornerback. Though, again, I kind of don't hate the corner situation right now. It's got some talent. But uh, LSU has reportedly reached out to former five-star Cormani McLean, who, uh, of course, played for Colorado. This was a massive get for Deion Sanders at the time. Uh, yep. Right now, he is projected to commit to Florida I I'm 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 in a weird spot with McLean where there's there's some red flags in that he didn't have the best freshman year. He was getting beat really badly at times. But like also I'm okay with a guy having to develop over time and then getting really good. I'm not saying that he's just gonna be awesome on day one or I don't care about the five star ranking or anything, but maybe the bigger red flags are when asked why he didn't play more last season, because he's a five-star, but he only played in nine games, yeah. started four. He didn't play more as the season went on. But when asked why he didn't play more, Dion said, well, you know, you can't show up late to meetings. You can't miss meetings. And he referenced, it, referenced the fact that he can see how much film everybody's watching on their iPads. Yeah. And so he knows who's prepared, and he would be a fool to put someone out there who's not prepared. And he said and that goes for everybody. But there's some... There, 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 there's some red flags there where I definitely understand kicking the tires, but I would not, if you're a fan, I would not be too hung up on like trying to get uh, Kermani McLean no matter what. I think if you're going after the corner position, he's a talented player, but that's not currently what you need. You have young talent. You don't need young yeah, talent. True. Now, if you could add a guy and it was a luxury, like sure, but that's not what the game is right now, right? You have a certain amount that you have in NIL you know, situations. And right now, it needs to be on defensive tackle, getting mm -hmm. multiple defensive tackles, probably yep. not just one. But also, if you're going to add a corner, T-Bob, for this team, I think it needs to be a veteran guy, a guy who has been through the fire, a guy that if the young guys, for whatever reason, right, the lights turn on, they're a little too bright at the beginning of the season, you have a veteran. That's why I like, like Alexander coming back from injury, I think is going to be huge. Is he the most talented guy in that room? Absolutely not. But he's a calming force. He's a guy that's been through that fire, and he can go out there – and when he went down last year, as bad as it was, like it got even worse. Yeah. So I think if you're going to add to that position, I think you add somebody that has that experience, not somebody that you think maybe one day kind of sort of can live up to the five-star ranking. 
God. It's so crazy. Jarek Bernard Converse has such a he, – uh, he, he, he takes up more of my mind space than he should. He's like the perfect addition. I know. I hope I – hope, and, and it was right at the beginning of the portal. I hope that people remember Jarek Bernard Converse. He was a huge, massive factor in winning the West and uh, all the success that you had in year one of Brian Kelly. And a guy even in that same vein, if not close to that same talent level, would be exactly – what LSU would be looking for here. Um, so chat kind of had the same thought I did, but I didn't know if it was completely fair to McLean to say this, but Ace Jordan says Denver Harris 2.0. Christian does a handshake emoji with McLean and Denver Harris. Ava Marzwani, it sounds like Denver Harris. I, I, I kind of agree that some of the red flags do seem similar. And I understand why you tried the Denver Harris experiment last year. And again, we all know that talent gets you more opportunities. Than, than it would otherwise, but um, it just went so disastrously that I don't know if you go down that road again. Though, again, new coaches, so maybe you're like, well, we'd be better suited to handling it this year. There, There is that element of it, but, but yeah, I, w- I would certainly maybe feel a bit more gun-shy uh, because of the Denver Harris situation. Mm, I, I guess, like, with some of the comments coming out of Boulder, yeah. For sure. I mean, very talented uh, player, but you're wondering, is he ready to be able to do what it takes to be a high-level college football player? Yeah. I mean, I think, I, you know, again, like you're not trying to compare because we don't know the situations, but similarities for sure. And, you know, you knew that, that Denver Harris was going to be somebody that you were kind of, you know, t- taking a flyer on. It's a little bit of a wild card. And at times it's like, okay. And at times it's like, okay, ooh, oh, okay. I mean, it wasn't bad logic because <laughs> Kelly was like, well, yeah, he has to get a turnaround. It's his last opportunity, right? And and it just still didn't quite come about. So we'll see. I don't really care about the McLean news because I don't think there's much there. The Barrow, Barrow's the one you should be watching because right – it's actually he is the top-ranked uncommitted D-tackle. He's even ahead of uh, the dude from TCU, those freshman yeah. All-American All-Big 12. So if, if LSU – like – you saw me. I wasn't very excited about the Gio Piaz news. Sure, it's 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 a body. It is what it is. But if LSU lands Simeon Barrow, that's a pretty massive get that would um, make this team significantly better in my mind. I agree. It's a position of need, but it's not just a body. It is somebody that has played at a high level. It is somebody that comes in day one. I think he is plug and play. He is going to be a starter next to Guillory. And even if he wasn't, which I think he is, you know he's going to get some run. You know he's going to be out there on the field. He's played in the Big Ten Conference, and that is a conference that plays physical up front. Like So all those things like play well for you True. going to get a player and trying to have him ready to go because you need him ready to go. Like he ha- Whoever you get has to be ready to play. Yeah, and he's ready to play Yeah, right away. And then him and Guillory start next to each other. That's, that's at least then a legitimate starting line. Right, and then you continue to kind of figure it out behind, and maybe get to big freshman contributions and whatnot. So here's to hoping that our guy Lon is on it here, and uh, and 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 Barrow is uh, uh, Barrow's coming down the pipe. Wow, Jake, what incredible takes! I mean, those guys—they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.